Well, hello, sports fans. This is the last athletics chat of 2020. It's athletics chat number 33. Three, three. Okay. Hello, Stuart. How are you? Hi. Um, I'm good. Christmas has come and gone. Yeah. COVID has come and not gone. Yes. It has. Uh, are you, um, are they giving out vaccines in lovely uh, Oxford yet? Yeah, they've started. Um, I would expect to get it about February as they work through the most vulnerable and so on. It looks like um, I will get mine in March, being I'm back in Wisconsin. And uh, so we will have to see how things go. But I had my um, flu and my shingles vaccines yesterday, and my arm feels like someone hit it with a two-by-four. And then uh, mm. they said I might get a, a fever and a bit of a, a cold but uh, uh, from the shingles, but I'm doing fine so far. And uh, got the house filled with provisions as we get ready for our big snow. So our first big one of the year. All so, right. So, yeah, uh, there's snow an hour north of us, but not but not where I am. Uh huh. Now, do you get much snow in lovely Oxford or no? Not, not okay. really. Okay. Well, we've got uh, so we've got some topics today. The first one we're going to talk about is the 2020 British Athletes of the Year. And wanted to kind of get your your thoughts on that. Well, sadly, the um, British Athletics Writers Awards lunch, which is one fun events of the year, didn't uh -huh. take place this year. It uh -huh. was just vir virtual, so we. But but we voted, and we've chosen as our male athlete of the year Jake Whiteman, and as right. a female athlete of the year Gemma Riki. Wow. Uh, that is that's not surprising. It's interesting that they're both Scottish. Yeah. So we have the dominance of Scotland. Mm -hmm. And also it's interesting that um, in the uh, in the the women's, the runner up was uh, Laura Muir and third place Laura Whiteman. So very much dominated by middle distance running. Mm -hmm. And in um, in the men's, the runners-up was uh, Andy Posse, the sprint hurdler, okay. and Mo Farah. Really, Farah, I think you could say, on the strength of that um, one-hour run mm -hmm. that he did. But I suppose, um, as you think about it, people like Dina Asher Smith wasn't eligible because she didn't do any serious running. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of the shorter-distance people... Um, didn't didn't compete much, so in a way, mm -hmm. it was. Uh, I mean, it, it was. It, it as Danielle Williams explained it to me. Uh, as a sprint hurdler, I need a, a straight with hurdles on it. My housemate Natoya, who's a distance runner, just needs a piece of road to run on. Yeah. So, um, for the technical events, it's been much more difficult this year to get in proper practice. Mm -hmm. Whereas for the for the runners, uh, I mean, like like Laura Muir and Gemma said to me that, well, when we were in lockdown, we could still go out and run along the canal. Yeah, yeah. That kept us taking over. So that, that, I suppose, is the reason. But then equally, uh, to be fair, uh, on the world stage, um, Gemma and Laura have been pretty dominant. And, yeah. and you know, Jake... Obviously, uh, you've talked to him. I have written about him. Mm. I think he has been very sensible this year and yeah. saying, look, I can't do what I would like to do, but let's use the year sensibly. Um, and he identified right at the start the top end speed as one of the things he wanted to work on. And so not only does he win an 800 at uh, Ostrava, running a PR, but he goes out then in Monaco in the only 1500 that he ran all year, and not only set uh, a PR, but ran faster than a certain Mr. Coe, uh, a Mr. Cram, and Mr. Ovid yes. have ever done. And yes. only Mo Farah, 
uh, as a British runner has ever gone faster than that. So, you know, there, there, that's an example of how an athlete can, rather than sort of sulking and saying, I can't do what I want to do this mm-hmm. year. Jake, I think, identified with his coach dad, Jeff, what he was going to do. He went out and did it um, and has got his confidence up and got himself in good shape. Now, I think that the athletes that you guys have talked about, from Gemma to Jake to Laura, all utilized 2020 to improve some of their weak spots. And that's what yeah. I think, as I looked at athletes this year, uh, and in the U.S. as well, um, those are the kind of things we see is uh, find you know, Galen Rupp did a real nice interview with us a little while back. And one of the things that Gay talked about was what he used this year for is to figure out what things he was, he had some weaknesses with and how could he improve them? Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. he spoke for a lot of people and I, and uh, it, it's been a strange year. And I, and I tend to think right now we're, um, I just got a note from the IAA from world athletics. I still, of course, call them the IAA. Um, but uh, they're changing around the world indoor circuit. Yeah. And the uh, Milrose Games is pulled out. Milrose pulled out because uh, partly of COVID, but what we understand too is there are two major sponsors pulled out for this year, uh, New mm-hmm. Balance and New York Roadrunners Club. So mm-hmm. that made it quite difficult. But the New Balance indoor games, uh, a stalwart on the circuit, has moved now from February 6th to the 13th. So they're back a week. They're the weekend of Valentine's Day. So um, mm-hmm. we hope that week will give them a little more of a chance to happen. Um, mm-hmm. I do not believe I have missed that meet since 1996. Um, so mm-hmm. it's uh, mm-hmm. um, it's one of my favorites, and uh, it stays on mm-hmm. the list. So it'll be kind of uh, it'll be kind well, of look, interesting. Presumably, if that were happening this week there would be all sorts of issues for international athletes being able to get into the States to compete. Yes. So we've got to see a bit of movement over the next um, um, month and a half yeah. uh, for that to be able to happen with with a, a, a strong international field. Yeah, it's a little scary right now because um, I guess Canada has shut down flights from London. Um mm-hmm. In the U.S., what they're doing right now is they've said that uh, if you're flying in from London, you have to show a, a test in the last 72 hours, and then they'll test you again. So um, I, I think that they're trying to be careful. You know, I've been I've spent uh, four weeks in California, the first 14 days, pretty much in quarantine, and then I'm now in Wisconsin, and I've just got to mm-hmm. stay put for a while too because. While the numbers are going down here, it's cold and people go indoors more and that's where people are getting sick. So we've just got to be careful, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Now then then the junior awards were quite interesting. Okay. Uh, Max Bergen, Max Bergen we've uh, uh, featured a little bit this yes. year. Yes. Uh, he ran a one forty four seventy five for the eight hundred and he's only mm-hmm. eighteen. Wow. So um, not a bad time for someone of that age. Uh, he ran one of the Diamond Leagues and didn't quite do himself justice. But, you know, uh, he's young and he's learning. And similarly, the um, the winner of the, the, the female junior was Kelly Hutchinson, who's also 18, and she won the British indoor and outdoor titles. Okay, you could say not everyone was there. Mm-hmm. But I just think it's encouraging to have these two 18-year-olds yeah. Who are just saying to Gemma and Laura and Jake and Chris O'Hare and so on, you know, um, we're we're here and we're coming after you. No, I think that's kind of fun. I think that the, the younger athletes, you know, we've got a couple uh, young women over here. There was a new um, high school American record set for the marathon of 231 and change in uh uh, early December, and uh, by uh, was an 18 year old, and then the performances at the uh, marathon project last week, December 20th, were were mm-hmm. phenomenal. I mean, Sarah Hall, who took second, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, was yeah. just lovely in uh, 
or two two twenty. And the, the I was very proud of myself uh, that uh, the night before I wrote a piece, and they said everybody's saying she'd get the American record, and I thought she needed one more race before she could really. Dina Castor's two nineteen is a big deal, and Sarah um, showed some class. The two twenty thirty two, very very impressive, you know. And so. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's nice to see some of these events go on. Um, it's nice to see some young athletes developing. Um, you know, we have had some really fine um, field events. I mean, the pole vault just mm-hmm. was amazing this year on both the men and women's yeah. side, and a lot yeah. of yeah. pole vaulters didn't compete, you know? So mm-hmm. it's... Um, just before we leave marathons, can I just mention a special award that our... Sure. Uh, writers groups gave to Ron Hill, who, oh. at his best, was a two ten marathon man. Yeah. But who had this phenomenal record? He's now eighty two, yeah. and uh, from nineteen sixty four to twenty seventeen, fifty two years, he didn't miss one day that he didn't go out for a run. And didn't he count one day as at least three miles? I'm sure he did. Yeah. So something like that. I mean, I, he has a two-volume autobiography called The Long Hard Road, which one of my buddies in the U.S. Had, um, called The Long Hard Read. And I have read both volumes, proud to say. And the he kept track of virtually every home beer that he drank, as well as all his miles. And the stories are phenomenal. Um, and it's uh, it, it's... I've got to meet him a few times. Mm. Always enjoyed Ron and, you know, his mm. uh, Boston Marathon win, you know, mm. his, uh, uh, mm. did he win the Commonwealth Games one year? Or was it a, I, um, before a European? Before my time, I, I could well have done. I don't remember. Mm. But he, you know, he, he was just, he's a phenomenal athlete. And the mm. other thing is, is what people don't give him credit for is he's a textile chemist. And he came up with, the best sports tights, the sport heels. I still have the pair that I originally bought in 1978 from him. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of people tried to knock him off, and no one did him as well. Uh, and, and Ron is just a good guy. So it's, I'm glad to see you do that. He's, he's yeah. one of the real immortals. Mm-hmm. If, if people want to see a film about him at his best, the 1972 official IOC film on Munich is called Visions mm-hmm. of Eight. And one mm-hmm. of the pieces is about Ron Hill. And I alert everybody to look at his shoes and his shorts. You think he was in 2001 Space Odyssey. He had this mm-hmm. um, material that was really shiny that uh, pushed the heat away from his, mm-hmm. his clothing. And... Uh, Kenny Moore, the American writer, described Ron Hill as a man possessed of the scientific method. And I always thought that was a lovely epithet for someone. But uh, so congratulations to Ron. That's, uh, now, is he a sir? Is he an MBE? Uh, he's not a sir. I'm sure he is an MBE. Yeah. Okay. But, okay. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you, Stuart, on that one. Um, and then our next topic is, um, let me put those glasses on for a second. What do I have on there? 220, our, our athletes of the year kind of on a um, more global thing. Track and Field News did something a little weird. I guess they didn't do the whole list this year of their uh, their peeps, but uh, Athletics International um, did, I think, Mondo Duplantis was the, person everywhere um and mondo's so good for our sport you know you talked about the young guys like max bergen mondo's but just a a 20 year old and um boy is he a character and he's a lot of fun and he's good for the sport absolutely absolutely who Um, do you think is the in the uk who's the who's the most colorful athlete on the men's side interesting question um, 
nobody who desperately stands out at the moment, I don't think. Mm. Greg Rutherford always used to be. Used to I be always thought he was a part of fun, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, when he, I mean, he was at one stage the world, European, Commonwealth, and Olympic champion. But but some writers always say, oh, well, yes, he only won because. And so um, I remember in Zurich in the 2014 European Championship, he came into the press conference before anyone spoke. He said, well, chaps, looks as if I flipped another one. I remember that one. I enjoyed that. I always thought that Greg had a wonderful sense of humor. Uh, he had mm. the ability to capture irony well. Um, and the the funny thing about it is you and I have known every time we've been to an Olympics or World Championships, mm. there's always people with great performances. But yeah. the idea is performing in the crazy atmosphere yeah. that is a world championships or olympics and um yeah the, the story I that i good go on. the story that i like to tell is from 2004 and i had taken my son adam to the olympics for the first time and we were sitting in the stands with a group of australian and japanese coaches we were watching the 100 meter final and i bet my son that I could pick the top five. And I picked him right before the race. And the one that surprised him is how I picked Asafa Paul. And I had watched Justin Gatlin, and I watched the top three guys totally focused, even though the crowd was screaming. But I watched Asafa Paul break his focus, and he recognized the crowd and to me, it was enough to say that he wouldn't be in the medals, and it or he couldn't he couldn't win. And and it just was uh, it's fascinating to watch how athletes respond in those situations. And the yeah. truth is, Greg just did it amazing. I mean, that's the thing with Mo. When you think about mm -hmm. Mo Farah, mm -hmm. watching mm -hmm. him, and I got to see him win every medal the, in, yeah. in a world champion Olympic games. And I, I still think the the um, I still think that uh, London 2017. Mm -hmm. I th I still have mixed feelings about that race, but he showed class in um, uh, in and then he came back in Zurich and won that race. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. just it's mm -hmm. you know certain athletes that shine out in those incredible moments that call for everything yeah. they've got um yeah. and i yeah. find that fascinating yeah now i mean going back to greg um when he won in london 2012 his his coach dan Pfaff said to me afterwards you know greg probably wasn't the best long jumper in that final but the conditions were bad and greg was the first one to work out how to deal with the wind yeah and went out and performed. That's always yeah. the case. I mean, it's like, uh, and you don't think, you know, a lot of times is fans and the media don't think about those things. It's like the pole vault, the pole vault in Rio was so difficult to read for the men and women. Yeah. And how do you do that? And, and mm -hmm. you know, Greg had that presence of yeah. mind to be able to do that. And some athletes mm -hmm. can do it, some can't. I remember how painful it was in Doha to speak to the young Jamaican, the young man who won the long jump. And I talked to him afterwards and was congratulating him and big jump, what, 868 mm -hmm. or 869, mm -hmm. and was trying to give him to give us a little bit of insight into his jumping. And I couldn't tell if it was as much shock for winning or just not that introspective yet, you know? Um, mm, yeah. And that's not what you would say about uh, uh, mm. guys like Rutherford, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Or, or, or yeah. Jonathan Edwards. I mean, I, 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 um, I mean, I remember watching him in Gothenburg, and yeah. uh, it was 
a perfect 15 minutes, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, 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 yeah. and it was just something that, um, yeah. how many athletes have we seen like that? I mean, Ryan Krauser in the mm. shot right now, he's got yeah. 10 of the 14 yeah. longest throws in the world this mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. And I asked him about it. Hey, can you tell when you're really letting one go? And he said, when he completes it, he said, when he finished, that's when, and I'm, it's, that's fascinating to me. I mean, the field events yeah. are just, mm -hmm. we don't give them the drama that they deserve. I mean, each yeah. track Good. field event is like that Netflix mm -hmm. film, a queen's gambit, you know, if mm -hmm. we could learn how to really let people get into the shot and the long jump and the triple jump and the pole vault, mm -hmm. um, yeah. th that would be, that would be a much different uh, experience. Yeah. But I think, you know, I think if Johnson were talking to us now, he would also say that while 95, that those two world records in 15 minutes was phenomenal, there's a certain frustration that he couldn't ever reproduce that. Yeah. Uh, only silver in the, in the uh, uh, 96 Olympics uh, didn't win the world championship in the uh, following year. Um, won the Olympics in 2000, um, but but never got close to that that, that distance again. So it's yeah, it, yeah. it's interesting how you do, how, but I mean it, I always think it's fascinating listening to Christian Taylor about talking about how difficult it actually is to jump that far. Yeah, about how you've got to be feeling perfect. The physical conditions have got to be perfect. The competition has got to go the way you want it to. And so there's an awful lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Jonathan probably wishes that he could have had his two world records in different meets rather than yeah. <laughs> twice wow. in the same yeah. meet. Yeah. No, I think that uh, I, I, it, it's very interesting how many athletes who set world records set one or yeah. two. And I remember Wilson Kip Katir, the 800 runner, we talked mm -hmm. about his bouts with malaria, and he said that he was talking about David Rodisha coming back, and he said that mm -hmm. if he was offering David any advice, he would have told David to take his time and to be mm -hmm. really patient because mm -hmm. when an athlete gets to a really high level, they know mm -hmm. everything's easy then, mm -hmm. and then they try to replicate it, and it's difficult. Because it's that perfect storm, right? It's the, it's the yeah. physical, it's the spiritual, yeah. it's the yeah. mental, it's the the natural world. What's going on? Yeah. And how do yeah. you put all those together? You know, and and yeah. Uh, yeah. so that's why you look at a guy like Ron Clark, who had set thirty five world records, and yeah. you look yeah. at you look at yeah. some of these others, and you just go, yeah, my yeah. gosh, you know. Yeah, but Ron Clark. Uh, set the world records, but but didn't win the major medals. Yeah, yeah, and that was you know that was the, you know, so many, you know, Lockie Stewart, the the Scottish ten thousand meter runner, who's yeah. just had some, yeah. just got over some health issues, and um, mm -hmm. uh, you know the uh, some of the others that the Ian Stewart, who won several medals, you know, got mm -hmm. ran you know Clark down a few times. Yeah. And uh, so it's it's fascinating to me to see yeah. um, athletes from that time period, the '60s, the '70s, yeah. Uh, yeah. and and how yeah. they've how they've performed yeah. and how they but, they've done things. But there's just two other examples around this theme. Like my old mate Chris Akabusi, who broke the British record for the 400 hurdles four times, mm -hmm. an Olympic final. A world final, a European final, and a world semi-final. I tease him and say you wasted the semi-final one. Yeah. But, I mean, to be able to go out and produce it in the races where you really want to do it, yeah. I think that's a phenomenal skill. Yeah, no, I, I always thought anybody could do a PB in a big race was pretty darn good, you know? Yeah. And uh, because... Exactly. Incidentally, I once heard somebody asking Chris Akabosi, have you ever run with Edwin Moses? And quick as a flash, he said, no, I haven't. 
but I've run behind him. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. That's that's really that's a classy response, I think. And the other name I wanted to throw at you was Blanca Blasic. You know, some good high jumpers never manage two meters, and she mm -hmm. has done it a hundred and sixty something times. Wow. It's that consistency. I mean, she's done it 40 times in one season. Man. Just to be able to go out time and time and time again and just do two meters, no matter what the competition is doing. Mm -hmm. I think that that is a phenomenal consistency that you often yeah. don't see. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, uh, it's just, she is a tremendous athlete and uh, always loved watching her compete. And I hope that she can. Uh, we will see her one more season, but we'll have to yeah. keep yeah. our keep our fingers crossed. Um, yeah. You also put in here um, your dreams for 2021. So let's. I'm curious to see what kind of things are you hoping for in 2021. Well, I think the first thing I'm hoping for in 2021 is a season. Yeah. Yeah. A season in like we had in '99. Mm -hmm. I mean '99. Uh, no, sorry, like 2019. A season like we had in 2019 with a full indoor season, followed mm -hmm. by um, all the Diamond Leagues uh, and the, a championship. But for these to take place in as near to normal conditions as we can. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've said several times how well this year Monaco and Stockholm and Rome did to put on an event under the constraints. But wouldn't it be nice if we could have some events this year with normal conditions, with a full crowd, with athletes able to talk to press after the races? Um, yeah. And without wearing masks. Yeah. No, it would be pretty incredible. I don't know how soon it'll come, though. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of think we're talking about 2022 late or 2023. I, I'm. Yeah. My my hope is that the vaccines work for the majority of people. That the majority of people actually accept the vaccines as working and take them. Mm. That people realize that they've got to still be careful. Yeah. I think we'll see some events in the second half of the year. I think we're going to be able to get a few indoor meetings in. Yeah. Um, maybe more than a few, which would really be nice. Uh, I love to be able to get to a couple events, but I also know that um, it's more than likely not going to happen. And, um, while I think that the 2021 Olympics may actually go on, I'm wondering what constrictions there will be. Yeah. And that's yeah. my biggest question about things. I think that's, that's totally right. I mean, I, I fear that we will have uh, Olympics, yes, but... Uh, probably not with full crowds and perhaps uh, with, uh, without the opportunity for us to talk to athletes afterwards, which will be a great disappointment if it's like that. Yeah, no, it's we, that's one of our favorite things to do. And, you know, that's where you get the insights and yeah. you, you're able to put a lot of people's careers in perspective, you know, and uh, that's... And then, uh, yeah. Yeah, as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, Tokyo was already talking about not having any live press conferences, only yeah. video, which would be yeah. a great shame because I know that you spend your life there. Oh no, I absolutely love those things. I, I, I it's interesting to me at the the medal award things. Athletes are in such a, a unique place because for mm. so many of them, it's the only medal they've ever won. Yeah. And they put their entire life in perspective. And yeah. I think that's one of the things that uh, that we do as journalists 
is give them the opportunity to do that and help them a little bit with it. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be disappointing because we're going to have, it's like Moscow in 1980. Um, the, I, I would get news reports every few days. Um, we didn't have any TV over here, no cable, you know. Um, and we didn't get to watch, you know, I saw a video later of Co and Ovet's races races. Yeah. Uh and and then I've now finally seen the videos of the men's ten thousand, which is fascinating from Moscow with Viren mm. and Yifter and that whole crowd. Um mm. and it's it's interesting to be able to understand it and appreciate it now. Mm. Um but I think that just the little things, just the things like you said, not wearing a mask mm -hmm. to meet, getting to, to talk to an athlete outside of their, mm -hmm. in the mix zone, um, yeah. talking to yeah. some athletes in the, um, in the metal stand and, and standing and mm -hmm. chatting with them for a little bit. Yeah. All of those yeah. things mm -hmm. have been, we can't do them right now mm -hmm. um, because any of them could expose mm -hmm. us to um, COVID. Yeah. And um, the numbers in your country are insane, and the numbers in mine are mind-boggling. And um, we, people don't know who to trust. Over here, uh, Dr. Fauci got uh, um, an uh, injection, a vaccine. And I've told people, well, if Dr. Fauci can do it, anybody should be able to do it, you know, because he's just a, a straight shooter. Um, but we're, we're in a, an age where everything is questioned and I think questioning is good. Um, but some of it's questioned for no reason. And, and, and that's the, that's the juggling. And I think that's why a sport like athletics is why it was so well received this summer. I mean, the numbers were really good on the events that we got to see, you know, yeah, and, yeah. uh, there were some tremendous performances mm -hmm. and I think our athlete friends were, you know, I've done 24, 25, um, socialing the distances and 33 mm -hmm. athletic chats. Um, we would have probably got involved in zoom in one way or another, but we got involved in zoom because it took care of my fix of wanting to talk to people. And I know I couldn't yeah. go near people, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, the um, indoor season, what do you hope for in 2021? Do, did you have a British Championships? I think the British Championship, well, they're scheduled. The only thing that would stop them, I think, would be if the government says you can't do that. But so far, the government ten, is tending to be allowing elite sport. Um, I can tell you virtually certain there will be no spectators. Um, I mean, at the moment, we were, we've been back in Premier League soccer of having up to 2,000 at games. But now there's 20 teams, and 18 of them are in what we call Tier 4 areas which doesn't allow any spectators. There's only two now that are allowed to have spectators. Um, and we are expecting the restrictions we're under at the moment to last for a couple of months. So I, I would be pretty certain that there will be no spectators at the British Championship. I won't be going because I, I won't have had the vaccine by then and I just think it's a risk I don't want to take. Um, I know that there are a lot of British athletes who want to compete as much as they can in the indoor season, mm -hmm. simply because they feel that they didn't have a, a, a 2020 season and that they really want to see where they're at, what they need to do uh, to peak for the Olympics. Yeah. So in that yeah. sense, I think there will, be, there will be more. The European indoor is going ahead in Turin, but again, I just think that's not one that Unless the vaccine suddenly comes my way, that's one that won't be in my radar either, sadly. I uh, always yeah. go to the, Europe, the European indoors. 
Yeah, no, I think that the um, – I don't love the European indoors. I went to uh, the one in Belgrade. I went to the one yeah. in uh, Prague. Um, and um, I went to the one in Paris, and they were all fascinating. The crowds were really into it. Um, it's one of those gems on the on the global circuit. Um, and I love the indoor season. In 2019, I went to all the indoor world indoor meets. I just followed them around Europe, started in Boston, and went from there. And had a great time. Um, each little town was fun, um, and I'm, I'm, I don't believe that's possible this year. Um, I don't believe I'll be allowed into Europe at all. Um, and I, 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 even if I have the vaccines, I'm not sure if, if, yeah. and I will be getting them, but I just don't know if that's going to be enough. You know, so we're 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 kind of getting to a place where, yes, we want to do these things, but. Uh, gosh, um, we need a little help from Mother Nature. We need a little help from yeah, the uh, yeah. uh, our, our, you know, our Creator, and uh, we need a little help from people remembering that they may not get COVID, mm-hmm. but they they can also prevent someone else from getting it yeah. by wearing a mask and washing their hands. And indeed, I just think indeed. those are basic. Mm-hmm human things it doesn't yeah. matter what faith yeah. you are or non-faith yeah. you know mm. just there's other people in the world think about them as well so yeah. um the uh my my uh preaching is over for the day but um this is our last uh, athletics chat of the year Stuart. and i wanted to thank you this has been really fun and we need to thank mike yeah. Deering and, and adam for yeah. coming up with the idea yeah. because they said why don't you call Stuart and get him chatting and let's have some fun. And these have been, yeah. these have been so easy to do each week. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, I'm always impressed with all your books in the background mm. and, you know, you get to see my little bowling award from the simply the pinhead 5k that I helped sponsor mm. one year. And, um, mm. we just, we have a good time with it, but we get to mm-hmm. talk about mm. the sport we love. And, um, yeah, Enjoy the new year, my friend, and I will see you. you next week. Um, yes. And uh, this is Larry Eater with Stuart Weir. Stuart's in the intellectual capital of the world. Of course, that's Oxford, England. And I'm in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, which is going to get a nice snowstorm in the next few hours. Um, Happy New Year to everybody. Stay safe. Athletics Chat 33 has just ended. Thank you. Stuart, thank you, my friend. Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater, Run, Blog, Run, Athletics Chat 33. But this is the epilogue, really my monologue, the Larry log. And uh, uh, Larry log, star chapter, uh, December 29th, uh, 2020. Anyway, um, British Athletes of the Year, Jake Whiteman, Gemma Reiki, um, And that's from the British Sports Writers Association, which is always a rather colorful event. Stuart loved going to it. This year it was virtual, so really not as colorful. But um, Jake was a good pick. Uh, His 329-1500, which put him second on the list behind Sir Mo and uh, ahead of uh, Sebco, Steve Cram, Mr. Steve Ovet. So pretty impressive for the young Scotsman. Um, and then Gemma Reiki, um, who had a fabulous year with some big 800s and some nice 1500s as well. Um, what Stuart and I talked about was how some athletes didn't compete at all. Some athletes competed kind of, how shall I say, with less than the vigor that we normally see in the season. And then some athletes decided, hey, these are the things I'm going to work on. Uh, Jake wanted to work on his top end speed brought his 800 PB down to 144 uh, with 18 and then um, also in a 329, uh, 87, 1500. So pretty dang impressive. Gemma Reiki got a nice 800 PB and came very close to four minutes in the 1500. So pretty uh, good stuff. Um, athletes of the year. Mondo de Plantis got most of the stuff. We always like Mondo. Um, the... Uh, uh, Women athletes, there were some great women pole vaulters this year, some strong women distance runners. 
Um, you know, we have talked about uh, for a while that um, there was some, there was a dearth of competitions for a lot of people, but some people really shined. And um, listen to our full broadcast, and Stuart will kind of give you a few of his deep thoughts. Um, then we got into our dreams for 2021, and the big thing is, is we want to get back to the old days. I'm not sure if the old days will ever be back. I think there's going to be limitations on the number of people who come to meets. I think that there will be screenings and testings for people who travel because part of the problem really is um, – and my glasses are weird and look strange on the screen to you guys. Sorry. Part of the problem is is that Mother Nature has taken advantage of us being able to travel around the entire world in 128 hours. We can virtually push any pandemic around the world pretty quickly, and we've got to watch those things. And just because we can do things progressively doesn't mean we should be doing them all the time. Um, the, other, the thing that I'm hoping for is that I think it's going to take to the middle of 2022 to get to where we need to be. And I think we got to be patient in 2021. I think we got to wear masks. We got to get vaccines. We got to think outside of ourselves. You can be healthy as a horse, but your grandma could get sick, or your kid could get sick, or your spouse could get sick, or your girlfriend or boyfriend. And wear the mask, wash your hands, use common sense because it's good for the planet, because it's good for the human race. Okay. Um, yes. The U.S. Constitution does give you the freedom to be stupid. A word that was banned in my house as a child. I was not allowed to use that word in the house. Um, but it doesn't mean you need to be. Um, the pandemic knows no political signs. Democrats, Republicans, Whigs, you know, progressives, social Democrats, everybody gets it and can get it. Um, and it's not comparable to the flu. There's only about 22,000 people who die from the flu as opposed to 300,000. So please don't try and, and mentally screw with numbers because I'll throw them right back at you. Um, use common sense. If you want good information, go to the CDC. They, they, they made some, said some goofy things early on, but they were just trying to learn too. We're all human and they're doing good things now. So follow their guidance, wash your hands, wear a mask, socially distance, especially in the winter, exercise, hydrate, eat well, um, and um, sleep well too. But tell someone you love them every day. Tell someone you care for them every day. Call your friends. If you can't go see them, get on the phone, Zoom. That's what Zoom's there for. Everybody uses Zoom, even I can use Zoom. So do those things, enjoy track and field, enjoy your life, Happy New Year. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. I wanted to thank you, our viewers, um, because you've made this a really popular program, Athletics Chat 33. The Athletic Chat's been going on for 33 weeks. Stuart Weir in Oxford, England, intellectual capital of the world. I'm in either San Jose or, you know, outside of Madison, Wisconsin. Mike Deering, our producer, is in Indianapolis, and he's been producing the thing and putting up with my jokes and trying to help me be more of a... Uh, a digital, you know, person than I normally am. I'm really a man of the 18th century. Um, but it's all worked. It's all come together. And there were reasons for that. And whether you believe in karma or whatever, um, these are good things. And we need to communicate and we need to share ideas and we need to respect each other's ideas too. So I wish you all a happy new year. I wish you all a safe new year. Please stay safe so I can see you at a track meet next year and you can tell me how wrong I am about a prediction or my favorite line of all times, Larry, stop smoking the crack pipe when I say something really stupid about a marathon. So anyway, happy new year to everybody. Thank you for watching the epilogue from Athletics Chat 33. This is Larry Eater signing off. Thank you, Mike Deering, for doing the whole year and Mike and Adam for figuring these this programming out. And um, Stuart Weir for talking to me each week. Okay, signing off.